Joy Radio, its employees, or affiliates. We make no recommendations or endorsements for radio show programs, services, or products mentioned on air or on our web. No liability, explicit or implied, shall be extended to W4CY Radio or its employees or affiliates. Any questions or comments should be directed to those show hosts. Thank you for choosing W4CY Radio. Welcome to Two Guys from Verona with hosts Dan Perkins and Don Mazzella. Each week, they bring you their take on the world today. Dan Perkins is a financial expert, a regular columnist for The Hill website, best-selling author, and founder of a nonprofit foundation for our injured veterans. Don Mazzella brings his years of journalism experience and insights to the world today. He's a veteran newsman currently running a series of online newsletters and magazines and is also a book author and on the board of the National Robotic Education Foundation. Together on each program, these men will provide thought-provoking ideas and commentary on what is happening politically, financially, and socially. They will also give listeners a heads up on future happenings. We start off each program with Dan Perkins' essay on what he considers an important issue facing us. Good evening and welcome to Two Guys from Verona. This is Dan Perkins. And Don Mazzella. And thank you for joining us. Uh, by the way, if you want to get a hold of us, you can send us an email through host, that's H-O-S-T-S, plural, at twoguysfromverona.com. So we've got a busy show tonight. I guess I'm up first. Um, the, uh, the title of my commentary for this section is called Deceit and Deception, the Democratic Party. Um, as I was watching and, and talking to Don earlier today about how the, uh, uh, and he's going to talk about it in his section, about uh, how the media is responding to Nancy Reagan's death, um, uh, there's, a, there's a little deceit there. But he'll talk about that in his section. I want to talk about how the Democratic Party has basically m misled the American people and our president has misled the world uh, on a couple of things. Let's start off with uh, deception. Um, we were told that we needed to have Obamacare because um, 47 million people were without health care in the United States. And that really isn't true. Even back then, uh, they weren't without health care. This is the deception. They may not have had insurance, but they were not locked out of health care. If they had a serious problem, they could go to an emergency room and they couldn't be turned down. If they didn't have the money, they couldn't be turned down. And that hasn't changed. But they decided to deceive us by mixing health care along with health insurance and putting them to, the two together which really misled the American people. People don't understand that there is a significant difference between health insurance and health care. Uh, Don mentioned last week that the Obama administration was going to postpone again the implementation of the, the new premium structure until after 2017, so the Republicans can't use it as a weapon against Hillary as she wants to continue Obamacare and, and improve it. Um, the idea that we were supposed to cover 47 million people, <clears throat> and it appears that 27 million are still not covered. Uh, the program is losing about a million participants a year because of the cost of the deductibles and the out-of-pockets are so horrendous. In addition to the premium, <clears throat> people can't afford to pay the deductibles and the premium so they're opting for public health and uh, not paying either one, the deductible or the health care, because they don't have the money. I think it was a very, very deceptive move on the, the Democrats' part to say that health care and health insurance were, in fact, the same. Uh, we have people in this country who are healthy, who have chosen or previously had chosen young people who had no injuries and no problems that they didn't need health care. What they wanted was a catastrophic policy. And um, if they got terribly, terribly sick. Um, so we, we have turned the medical system upside down under the, the deception of the American people that we will get uh, health care for everybody in the country. 
not going to happen. Now, the second part of it has to do with global warming. Now, Don tells me he's been talking about global warming longer than I've been around on this earth, and that's probably true. But <clears throat> this is another deception and deceit. The National Oceanographic Association recently had a report that talked about, uh, in their press release, 58 years of global warming. But the chart that they put in the document was only 38 years. When other people went back and looked at the chart for the 20-some years that they left off, they found out that the, the average ten temperature change over the 58 years of the study was virtually less than one half of one degree. Again, we're confusing global warming to and comparing it to um, uh, the, the problem that we have with uh, supposed pollution uh, and we have climate change. So again, this is another area of deceit where uh, the, the administration and, it's, and has conned the rest of the world into the idea that we're, we're destroying the planet, that it's man that's doing it, at, but they're mixing together global warming along with uh, climate change. And they are absolutely two totally different things. It just seems to me that the idea that we have to deceive people, and by the way, that deception on global warming has cost the world in 2014, the latest year I could find numbers, $395 billion, and they didn't do anything about changing the temperature. Don? As usual, l let me talk about Obamacare for, for a minute. Um, everything you said is true. If you remember, President uh, Obama said if you liked your policy, you could keep it. If you liked your doctor, you could keep him or her. Well, n both of those things have proven not to be true. In fact, uh, um, a recent study by uh, uh, American Health In uh, Insurance uh, Group indicates that less than 10% of the American people have a policy that even approaches what they had uh, before Obamacare. It's a shame, uh, no question. Uh, they lied about it, and as the various um, members of the administration leave to take the private jo jobs, they're admitting that the fact that the, the, uh, they cook the books in a lot of different ways. It's a, it's a shame, but, but it, it is the way of politics. Uh, we, uh, you may know, uh, have hsafinder.com, where we've been talking about HSAs uh, since their inception. Right now, if the numbers are to believe, and these come from uh, two different sources, 20 million Americans are covered by HSAs, which are de uh, deductibles, which are the best uh, uh, retirement plans you can possibly get. They're better than uh, uh, anything out there because you don't pay uh, taxes when you put it in, and if you spend it on uh, medical, you don't pay taxes uh, w when you uh, leave and all the interest and uh, monies you make under it um, are tax-free. It's a great plan, and Americans are finally uh, tumbling to it because the, the, uh, the trend is to have a high deductible policy, $5,000, which is where HSAs really shine. I'd like to add one thing to your global uh, warming. Uh, I'm a kind of an archaeology buff. And if you go and look at the tree rings in the southwest of the United States, um, where the, the Indians, uh, Native Americans, as we're supposed to say, um, put up uh, cut trees and put them up and match the tree rings to the years, you'll see that there is a regular pattern of drought, of uh, a high, higher temperatures, lower temperatures, etc. We've been having a, a global change since the Neanderthals were in existence. So, uh, and by the way, we just found out that 90% of, of the people in this uh, world, you know, in Europe and uh, in the United, in North America have Neanderthal uh, genes. But what it does prove is that we've had change since time immemorial and we'll continue. Dan? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. There was a survey, I think it was done by Rasmussen, 
and 92% of the Americans who responded, voting people who responded to the survey, indicated that they believed that uh, global warming was a hoax. And, uh, you know, we're spending more money on global warming in the United States than we are on protecting the border in Mexico. And the music's coming on, so it sounds like we have to take a commercial break. We'll be right back after these messages from our very important sponsors. You're listening to Two Guys from Verona with Dan Perkins and Don Mazzella. They'll be right back after a word from their sponsors. Are you worried about your mom or dad living alone in their house? Hi, I'm Joan London. Listen, I know how difficult it is to find senior care for someone you love. That's why I recommend a free service called A Place for Mom. They are the nation's largest senior living referral service. Call A Place for Mom today. To receive free information on senior living communities in your area, call A Place for Mom at 1-800-750-6128. A Place for Mom offers free, one-on-one advice from local advisors and a personalized list of senior living communities you can visit. If you have questions about senior care for your mom or dad, there's a place for answers, a place for mom. Call A Place for Mom in the next 10 minutes to get your free ebook on financing senior care as well as free information on senior living communities in your area. Call 1-800-750-6128. That's 1-800-750-6128. Little children aren't the only ones afraid of the dark. Millions of soldiers return from war zones with PTSD, traumatic brain injury, anger, frustration, fear, and loneliness, much of which surfaces during the darkness of night. You have the chance to change the lives of these American heroes. Songs and Stories for Soldiers was created to serve veterans who deal with the lack of sleep due to their injuries. Songs and Stories for Soldiers.us provides a free MP3 player for these men and women. With a list of 3 million songs in 16 different styles, 100,000 audiobooks, and 30,000 old time radio programs, every veteran can find something to soothe and comfort them at no cost. All our players contain an 8 hour audio program designed to help veterans fall asleep. With 1,500-plus vets now participating, it's our goal to deliver 10,000 audio players this year. To learn how you can help, go to our website at songsandstoriesforsoldiers.us. Help us to help a veteran make it through the night. Welcome back. You're listening to Two Guys from Verona. Once again, here's your hosts, Dan Perkins and Don Mazzella. Dan, let's give them the... the, uh, Email address if they want to, uh, if the audience some f- wants to talk talk to us. And, sure. And can sit. It's hosts at songs and no, I'm sorry. It's hosts at two guys from Verona dot com. I was thinking about uh, my charity. I apologize. Yeah. I apologize. Well, your, your charity is pretty good. Hosts with an S. Right. Uh, my my t- 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 uh, talk tonight is about death and dying. Uh, in particular, in my family, we were hit with three deaths uh, over the weekend. Uh, one of elder, none of which were expected. It's interesting uh, when you hear about someone that you expect to be dying, you, it, it kind of hits you. But when you, you, out of the blue, three different people at three different age groups, um, uh, suddenly, as as the saying goes, passed, uh, it really hits you hard. <clears throat> We were, um, my wife in particular, the two of them were close friends. And she, <clears throat> she's really taken it hard. Um, you know, John O'Hara, uh, uh, an author we seldom read about nowadays, said, we all, um, we all die alone. And in this case, all three of them died in the night by themselves. <clears throat> and it's kind of sad. And I, uh, I wanted to bring them up today to remember them and also, uh, give a lesson for all of us. Death is really close by. We just don't realize it um, until something like this happens. And then that's my way of segueing into uh, um, Nancy Reagan, whose death over the weekend, uh, while didn't surprise a lot of people, judging by how the uh, all of the obituaries were already set in type. But it's really interesting. Uh, what I thought was... Uh, particularly uh, uh, egregious in my view is how all of a sudden she is America's icon. Um, to, uh, now 
three days after her death, <clears throat> we're still seeing fashion spreads. We're seeing stories about her. Yet uh, the media, the national media, when, when she was president, uh, the, the first lady and the, the real helpmate to one of the most popular presidents in American history, um, a recent uh, survey indicated that un unlike other presidents, uh, Ronald Reagan has actually increased in popularity amongst Americans. Very, very interesting. Uh, and the other interesting thing about it was that this increase was also amongst the young people. <clears throat> but Nancy Reagan was, um, she was laughed at because she had an astrologer in the White House. Well, I don't know about you, but I look at the astrology pages sometimes. Um, she was laughed at because she was such a fierce uh, supporter of her husband. But, but now the Amer American media is falling all over themselves talking about it. They're even going to televise her funeral services. And when was the last time we saw a first lady's funeral service uh, when she was out of office televised? And it's really interesting. And then uh, last week, if you call the founder of Chesapeake Oil, uh, whether he committed suicide or what, we don't know. But he, uh, his sudden death has thrown everybody. I don't know if you saw the Wall Street Journal story about his financial picture. He, he even um, mortgaged his uh, uh, rare bottle collection uh, and, and his homes and everything to keep his newest enterprise going. And the, the whole story is about the fact how what a mess he left behind and, and how the lawyers are all going to make a lot of money on it. But, but all of this kind of brings me back to the point that death is close by and we should prepare for it in any way we can. Uh, I look forward to seeing my parents and uh, wherever we may be. Uh, I'm sure all of us do. But uh, as we approach the end of the, our lives, because uh, most of my life's behind me, I kind of look at death and dying in a whole new perspective. And to put a fine point to your Obamacare story, when you're young, you think you're immortal. That's why so few people, relatively speaking, have signed up for Obamacare, young people. And that's, it's ironic. It's at 35 that you start thinking about insurance. Uh, I'm way past that point, and like your thoughts, Dan. Well, you know, uh, there's an old Irish saying, we talked about it when we were uh, talking earlier in the day, that death usually comes in threes. And you, uh, it's not over until the third one dies. Uh, I don't know whether that's true or not, but it was a little scary when you told me you lost three over the weekend. Um, <clears throat> it is a part of who we are. And in, it, there's a real, um, a real challenge here because we are in a society that is consistently evolving away from the image of God and, and religion and a hereafter. And so those people who have lost their way, who've lost their faith in the Lord or whatever they call them, um, when it comes time for them to leave this earth, I wonder what they're going to be thinking about on their deathbed. Are they going to look back on their life and wonder maybe there was a God and, and uh, I made a terrible mistake? Um, don't know. And, uh, and I think it, but it is an important thing to think about because it is part of the process. The most devastating part of the process is, uh, when a parent loses a child, uh, when a child dies before the parent, that's, uh, we've had that happen in our family and our extended family a couple of times. It's, it's just terribly devastating, but losing a parent as a, as a senior citizen, still is a traumatic experience for us and and uh and we uh we as you write if you say don we face it every day in fact every day we live we get closer to our ultimate termination but it, it the, the nancy thing was um if a lot of people don't know much about nancy other than what they're seeing in the papers today i would strongly suggest they pick up bill o'reilly's book killing uh reagan it's a wonderful story about a relationship between the two of them, what a good woman can do to make a good man even better. 
and I read the book. Uh, actually, read it twice because it was so enjoyable. And I'm I'm a I'm not an old history buff like you are at counting rings on trees. Uh, I'm a more contemporary history. I thought it was a wonderful story about uh, how Reagan uh, changed himself, changed his political beliefs, and changed the country. And you're right. I, I think that the the young politicians today, where you hear Marco Rubio and you hear Ted Cruz talking about Reagan, and you hear people saying that perhaps Ted Cruz is the most like Reagan we've got in this batch of politicians. Um, <clears throat> I think that uh, that what's going on is that uh, we're we're we want to go back to a day when we were proud to be an American, and I think that pride of American citizenship um, is dying out as we, as the elder generation, uh, go to meet our maker. It's, it's, a, it's a sad thing uh, when we lose a loved one, but it's a sad thing when we lose a country. And I have, I have great fear that we're losing a country. And I don't know what's going to happen to the American people if we don't stop what's going on. I mean, I can talk to you about it from a financial standpoint, but where do we go? Where, where, how do we survive? How do we not turn into uh, a, a European country um, that uh, the government pays for everything? So people die, countries can die, religions can die, and um, it's all inevitable to us as we as we pass through this uh, this great big blue marble, as they used to call it, looking at it from space. I think that it's uh, it's sad that she's passed away. Uh, she was a great supporter of her husband, uh, but uh, you and I both have great supporters as wives. They just are not uh, uh, as, as much in the limelight as Mrs. Reagan was. But there are a no, lot of I, huh? No, I, no. Go ahead. I wanted to just make one more comment. Okay, go ahead. Mm. No, you, you, you've uh, you've brought up a lot of things, but you, the thing about this country, I, I know I, with my parents, and I suspect with yours. We always thought it's the next generation as the generation that, that would do better than us, that would be happier than us, that uh, would accomplish greater deeds. We're not seeing that in this new generation. We're seeing that the, they can do financial engineering of corporations, but they can't build new co giant corporations. They can't go out and land on the moon and do the various things. Uh, my, my father always said to me, Go out and be better than me. I suspect your father said it in almost the same way. Mm -hmm. And we're not seeing that. Um, the, it, what I am seeing is um, a generation of some young people that seem satisfied. I gave a, a lead to a young lady uh, and that was two weeks ago for a job, and she has yet to call that job, mm. that person. There, there seems to be a lack of get up and gumption. Right. I agree. Okay. We need to take a break. Um, remember, if you want to send us an email, it's host, plural S, at two guys from Verona.com. We'll be back shortly. You're listening to Two Guys from Verona with Dan Perkins and Don Mazzella. They'll be right back after these messages. The Brotherhood of the Red Nile, America Responds. This is the final installment of the Brotherhood Trilogy, and over this series we've been attacked by terrorists using weapons of mass destruction and have begun to rebuild America from all the destruction. In the last book, America Responds, the Pathfinders have been charged to find the Brotherhood. Just as they're ready to close in and capture the Brotherhood, the President tells them, just follow them. The President develops a plan of attack not just on the Brotherhood, but on terrorists worldwide. Will the President's plan work? Will the Pathfinders succeed? Find out in the final book of the Brotherhood Trilogy, The Brotherhood of the Red Nile, America Responds. For more information, go to www.danperkins at sanibel.com. That's www.danperkins at s-a-n-i-b-e-l dot com. Dan Perkins' new book, also available at amazon.com. Are you worried about your mom or dad living alone in their house? Hi, I'm Joan London. Listen, I know how difficult it is to find senior care for someone you love. That's why I recommend a free service called A Place for Mom. They are the nation's largest senior living referral service. Call A Place for Mom today. 
To receive free information on senior living communities in your area, call A Place for Mom at 1-800-750-6128. A Place for Mom offers free one-on-one advice from local advisors and a personalized list of senior living communities you can visit. If you have questions about senior care for your mom or dad, there's a place for answers, a place for mom. Call a place for mom in the next 10 minutes to get your free ebook on financing senior care as well as free information on senior living communities in your area. Call 1-800-750-6128. That's 1-800-750-6128. Welcome back. You're listening to Two Guys from Verona. Once again, here's your hosts, Dan Perkins and Don Mazzella. Well, like we've been saying all the way through the show, if you'd like to uh, write to us, uh, we eventually want to get into uh, taking calls on the air and also bringing on some guests. But to write to us, it's host, plural S, at twoguysfromverona.com. My third segment is kind of a continuation of what uh, Don was talking about. Um, It is um, an amazing thing that Don and I have seen in our lifetime and our wives have seen the advances in medical science the in the pharmaceutical industry. I know they get a bad rap from Hillary um, and Bernie and uh, even from Ted Cruz, but it's the pharmaceutical companies in America who are leading the world in research and development of new drugs. Not all of them work, some of them do. But what's happening today is now that the drug companies are beginning to find formulas that don't just treat people, they cure people. And let me give you a most recent example. Merck and uh, Gilead and Bristol Myers have all brought out drugs that cure 99% of the time hepatitis C and hepatitis B. Cure, and they cure people in 12 to 24 weeks. Now it's expensive. It's like $40,000 for $42,000 for a treatment for the entire period. But you got a 99% chance of being cured and not facing kidney transplants down the road, which are hundreds of thousands of dollars. You know, I remember when we got the polio shots and we had the, uh, the little thing they stuck us on in the arm when I was in school. That's the, really the last major cure we've had in this country. We've developed a lot of things to treat cancer and to high blood pressure and many other diseases. But a major cure of a major killer, hepatitis C and hepatitis B, um, dramatic. Uh, I talked to some researchers over the last weekend while I was back in New Jersey visiting my new grandson. And... Um, they tell me that the, the technology that's being developed to treat leukemia and other types of, other types of cancer, uh, they're telling me that they believe that the pharmaceutical industry is on the verge of virtually creating a series of new drugs with very low side effects that could cure cancer or many forms of cancer. Now, that's a plus and a minus. Somebody's got to put up the money, and I know I'm the money guy on this show, Somebody's got to put up the money and take the risk because not every drug is successful. Not every drug gets out of all three phases of trial. Not every drug gets approved by the FDA. But we have companies who are willing to risk their capital and shareholders who are willing to invest money with those companies if they can find a cure for another disease. Uh, We have a, a real problem. We have politicians who think they're doctors and, and, and business People and many of the politicians who are criticizing the drug industry have never held a paycheck in their entire life other than one working for the government. The idea that corporations are willing to put up their money and their shareholders' money to try and see if they can find a cure for a major disease speaks very well of the quality of the research that's taking place in the United States. But there are congressmen and senators and politicians running for president right now who think that... Uh, we need to cut back on the drug companies. We need to uh, we need to not give them any advantages. If you uh, if you talk to any uh, parent today who's got a young child going into high school next year, you'll talk to them about their tuition bill. And when they f- 
get time to pay their tuition bill, when you ask them the question, why is it so high? Most of them will tell you that they've been told at the orientation sessions at the college or university where their child is going, that under Obamacare, there have been dramatic reductions in the research grants from the United States government and the National Institute of Health in trying to find these types of cures. And so if the government is not helping industry by supporting it, it has to support itself. Colleges, therefore, are not getting the money from the federal government to do the research, so they have to raise the prices that's costing the children to go to our children and grandchildren to go to college. This is a very complex situation. We want our drug companies to have a chance to make a reasonable return on their investment, to be able to recapture their cost, and realize that many of the drugs, more of them will fail than will be successful, and we have to help them by encouraging them as investors and individuals to fight this uh, ridiculous discussions that are taking place at, in Congress and in uh, some governorships around the country. It makes no sense to try and stifle the creativity and the research capabilities of some of the leading drug companies in the world. And Don, what do you think? Well, you know, I just uh, had my second kidney operation and I lost one kidney years ago and I almost lost this other one. And thanks to uh, medical science, uh, it hasn't happened. Uh, both of them were in the cancer. And, and uh, uh, I couldn't agree with you more. The very idea that I would have to go on the dialysis and hopefully find a kidney donate, uh, donor was just frightening and probably scared me more than anything else in the last uh, 40 years. And everything you say is true. Um, there's new legislation coming down the pike, uh, making it easier for people to knock off patented drugs. Uh, we're seeing a real assault on Big Pharma. God knows I'm not the biggest uh, fan of uh, Big Pharma uh, for many reasons, but uh, they have done a tremendous job. And despite the reduction in the research by the Big, big Pharmas, um, uh, they've had some remarkable uh, breakthroughs, I, and I couldn't agree with you more. But I ought, but I disagree with the what you said about the colleges. The reason the, uh, the college um, uh, tuition has gone up so high is a that they don't practice b uh, being good managers, and b the high the more the tuition, the more they can get in government grants, um, the Pell scholarships, and all that other stuff. I think we're in, in for um, a very austere uh, change over the next 10 years the, uh, brought about by the simple fact that uh, uh, there ain't that much money to go around anymore and something's got to give. Back to you, Dan. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I, I, I happened to start a, a dialogue last week with something that that could be incredibly exciting for veterans in the United States. And... Um, um, uh, one in four Americans, Don, is now diagnosed with diabetes. And 40% of the adult population in the United States is, is diagnosed as either diabetic or pre-diabetic. Diabetic, diabetes is a huge problem. Um, and eventually, uh, even with uh, treatment, uh, ultimately leads to uh, kidney dialysis and then looking for uh, the possibility of a transplant. And uh, there's an organization called Living Donors who has a program that they make, they try and find matches for people who are alive and healthy, who are willing to give um, one of their kidneys to somebody else. And I spoke over the weekend with a gentleman who was um, on kidney dialysis. He, he heard of this organization, Living Donors. He applied, he was tested, and... Uh, Within three and a half months, he got a kidney. Uh, if you're on the government waiting list, it could take 10 years, yeah. 10 uh -huh. years to get a kidney. So it's, well, uh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, you know, I'm a diabetic. Mm -hmm. And uh, the way you cure diabetes, or at least keep it at bay, is uh, exercise, good, the right food, not, uh, don't limit it, and, and be be smart about it. 
take the drugs that that will work for you. But uh, when they talk about this 40% figure, uh, um, I, I always l laugh at it because we're all essentially pre-diabetic if, if we really came down to it. But the idea is it's what you do with your own body that counts. There's a wonderful Limelighters line that uh, we have that old trio group that said, clean mind, clean body, take your choice. Hmm. But in... Uh, but in this case, with diabetes, you can have both. And I really urge, urge people, we didn't start out this way, but I really urge people, if they think about it, if, um, do something about it now. Don't wait until it hits you. Yeah. Yogi Berra, the uh, famous catcher from the New York Yankees, said one time when he was asked about uh, being close to 90 years of age, he said, you know, if I'd have known I was going to live this long, I'd have taken better care of myself. Mm -hmm. um, we always seem to be able to figure out what we need to do after it's too late to do it. Um, yes. And uh, but I, I do think that it's it's uh, uh, without research, without medical research, we're not going to we're not going to help a lot of people. And we have the the organizations who are willing to put up the money to try and research. There is a Peter piece of research that is being discussed at the moment, Don, which really bothers me and it was in last week there is a, a group proposing in England that they're going to harvest uh, fetuses for the purposes of extracting stem cells to to do research to create uh, to create new drugs um, I have a hard time with that one and uh, in many cases I find myself I'm in a I'm in a minority um, I, I just uh, I, I look at what's happened in all those videos of Planned Parenthood and um, you know when we think about dying as you pointed out we, th we, th we think about having if it's our parents we think about them dying with dignity I'm, I'm really sad that your your friends all died alone nobody should have to ever die alone uh, but I realize it does happen and um, Hospice is a great help to, to make sure that somebody doesn't die alone. But we, we, uh, we have to remember that the old fogies like me and you, Don, are the, are the dying generation, but we're also responsible for the country the way it is, and the next generation is responsible for what the country can be. And I think it's important for a lot of people to understand that they have a responsibility. And that means taking care of themselves, to get involved, to make commitments to other individuals and to and to uh, medical societies, trying to help, and uh, I think that's one of the things that's really missing, Don, is that uh, we, in many cases, we're the most generous country in the world. But I, I want to say, I think we're less generous than we were another generation ago. I think we, we don't care as much as we used to. You know, it's funny, um, uh, Wilbur Jackson. The, for, for, uh, the, fir uh, the first black mayor of Atlanta was talking about uh, the change in society. And he said when he was growing up, uh, and this is a black, going up in a black neighborhood, the, the, the women all lo looked out for the kids. And if he did something wrong, they would report, uh, report it to his mother and father. Uh, and it's funny. I could tell, say the same story about my neighborhood, and I have a hunch you could say the same story about your neighborhood. Right. But, but we don't do that anymore. We're afraid to, to get involved. We're afraid that people are going to say, say something. Uh, get, and if you say something, they'll get angry at you, not at the kid who's doing something wrong. Yeah. It's a sad part of life, but it's, it's an accurate part. Um, it's an everyday occurrence. And that, to me, is the, the shameful part of what's happening to our society. Yeah. We... So we gotta, we got to take another commercial break. Remember, if you want to write to us, it's uh, host, plural S, at twoguysfromverona.com, and we'll be right back. You're listening to Two Guys from Verona with Dan Perkins and Don Mazzella. They'll be right back after a word from their sponsors. Are you worried about your mom or dad living alone in their house? 
Hi, I'm Joan London. Listen, I know how difficult it is to find senior care for someone you love. That's why I recommend a free service called A Place for Mom. They're the nation's largest senior living referral service. Call A Place for Mom today. To receive free information on senior living communities in your area, call A Place for Mom at 1-800-750-6128. A Place for Mom offers free one-on-one advice from local advisors and a personalized list of senior living communities you can visit. If you have questions about senior care for your mom or dad, there's a place for answers, a place for mom. Call A Place for Mom in the next 10 minutes to get your free ebook on financing senior care as well as free information on senior living communities in your area. Call 1-800-750-6128. That's 1-800-750-6128. The Brotherhood of the Red Nile, America responds. This is the final installment of the Brotherhood Trilogy, and over this series we've been attacked by terrorists using weapons of mass destruction and have begun to rebuild America from all the destruction. In the last book, America responds, the Pathfinders have been charged to find the Brotherhood. Just as they're ready to close in and capture the Brotherhood, the President tells them, just follow them. The President develops a plan of attack not just on the Brotherhood, but on terrorists worldwide. Will the President's plan work? Will the Pathfinders succeed? Find out in the final book of the Brotherhood Trilogy, The Brotherhood of the Red Nile, America Responds. For more information, go to www.danperkins at sanibel.com. That's www.danperkins at s-a-n-i-b-e-l dot com. Dan Perkins' new book, also available at amazon.com. In this final segment, Don and Dan offer their predictions on what's going to happen in our world. Well, this is where we uh, we have to take a look uh, at the near term. And uh, um, being a money guy and been watching the markets, um, probably the biggest story of the last week and potentially may be the biggest story uh, this week and for weeks to come is what's happening with the price of oil. On, um, on my money management website, uh, Dan or um, Money in Motion, it's mot.blogspot.com. Uh, I put up a chart this week that shows what's happened to the price of crude oil. And uh, three times in the last uh, five, six days, uh, we have gone to $34.25 a barrel and fallen off. The last time we hit 34.25, we went through 34.25, and in fact, this morning we hit 39.90 a barrel. Um, I think it, it will probably hold in this level to just under $40, but could run between now and uh, the middle of the year, uh, maybe to $40, $45 a barrel. The frackers are telling us $40 a barrel, we're back in business. Uh, the Saudis and everybody else in the Middle East can't make money at $40 a barrel. Um, we have about a 2 million barrel surplus per day, but what's been happening is that surplus has started to come down, and even with Iran back in the market. So I think that uh, 34.25 might be a holding area on the downside, uh, not that it couldn't go lower, but a downside for, for crude oil. And uh, I think that uh, if we get a Republican president uh, in November uh, and we get a good solid majority and we keep the majority in the House and the Senate, we could see a very significant year end rally as people begin to think that maybe America can come back again. It's very important that we understand that oil is the most productive energy in the world and green energy, wind, solar, are not commercially viable at $34 to $40 a barrel for crude oil. So keep watching crude oil and you'll see which way the markets are headed. I think it's up to 40, maybe 45 by midsummer. Don? Well, uh, I, I wanted to talk about an interesting phenomenon that's a longer term than that. You know, um, Harper Lee, just the uh, author of to, to Kill a Mockingbird, recently died and just before she died she published her second novel uh, both featuring uh, Atticus Finch uh, her, 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 her father in real life etc and it's very interesting um, 
the numbers are coming in now on the on the second book. The first book celebrated America, made a wonderful movie with Gregory Peck, uh, talked about uh, all the values you and I uh, espouse that a lot of Americans of our generation did. The, the but. She then turned around and published a book about her father, who was a racist, and a few other things, etc. Not a very pleasant character. Well, uh, what I've I heard I've heard from the publishing world is that the the novel is a dud. That it, yes, it will sell it. It is a best seller, but not to the expectations that they had hoped for, nor did for the advance and what they paid. And why? Because I think America has changed. Uh, I th think the people who took the uh, To Kill a Mockingbird to heart are either dead or longing for an America that, that seems to be uh, um, eluding us. It was a story of a lawyer who sought racial, racial justice, a father who cared for his children, um, uh, and a man who upheld the law and believed that, that, the, that the law was the most important thing. And, and if you read the, the new novel, which I had to read, uh, you sit there and say, is this the same man? Is this the same country? Is this the same thing? It's a real sad commentary. Uh, but it turned out that the second book was actually the first book that Harper Lee wrote. And, and, the, uh, and perhaps that's how she really felt. But the I guess what I'm getting at, and perhaps the most important thing is, uh, America has changed, and I don't think it's changed for the better. And uh, it's not an immediate thing, but it's happening, and it's happening again and again. And I think this election for president is one of the most important elections in American history. And if we continue going down the path we're going, we are uh, in trouble. As you know, Dan, I always recommend that people read Tacitus, uh, Tacitus's Annuals, which is the story of the demise of the Roman Republic. And if you read it, as I did recently, or reread it, you realize how how much uh, what's happening today happened in Rome and ultimately led to the destruction of, of Rome. It's a sad commentary, and that's what I'd like to talk end with. But I'd like your thoughts. Yeah, I just wanted to ask you a quick question about the, the sequence. So if I heard you say it correctly, book two was really book one and book one became book two. Is that what you said? Well, thanks to a very, very good editor. The first book, uh, uh, Harper Lee submitted the second book, the, fir the first book, and uh, it was bounced. But, she, but the editor, a woman, I forget her name at the moment, convinced her to write, rewrite the book into what became To Kill a Mockingbird, even provided the title for the book. And uh, if you read the book or saw the movie, it, it is a really, um, it extols all the values of, a, uh, American, uh, uh, of American history. The other interesting thing is, as someone said, um, said uh, recently on a, a TV program, that m movie, To Kill a Mockingbird, could not be produced in today's environment. What a sad commentary. Right. We have to be concerned about uh, uh, who's, in the, who's in the starring role and who's the director and who's the producer and, and what color their skin is as opposed to what their ability to act and, and to be master storytellers. It's, that's, that's part of the co commentary that we're dealing with. Well, we're coming up on the end of our program again, sir. Um, so it's, uh, let me say good night to you. Well, before you do, tell us a little bit about uh, your, your charity. Songs, we, and we, Stories, uh, Songs and Stories for Soldiers is um, an organization that helps veterans to deal with um, suicide, which is part of the post-traumatic stress disorder symptoms. And you can go to our website, songsandstoriesforsoldiers.us learn more about us and uh and if you have a, an extra change in your pocket you can make a contribution so we're we're running out of time and so i'll say good night to you don good night to you dan and we'll be back next week and remember if it's important to you it's important to us if you want to communicate to us you can get to us at host plural s at 
Two guys from Verona.com. Thanks for watching, listening. Thank <laughs> you.